All right, hello everybody and welcome to a Lightroom Basics tutorial. So um, today I'll be running you through the very basics of Adobe Lightroom 5. Now this tutorial is for those who really want to get started with Lightroom but have absolutely no idea where to start. So today I'll be going uh, uh, through the very, very fundamental basics of Lightroom 5. All right, so every project you do in Lightroom 5 is called a catalog. So it's uh, logged as a Lightroom catalog file. So um, all your pictures that you import into that catalog are actually indexed. So it's non-destructive uh, destructive editing in Lightroom. Even where, uh, with JPEG, everything is non-destructive. So let's go ahead and create a new catalog. Let's create new catalog and let's name this Lightroom Tutorial. All right. So every time you open or load a catalog, Lightroom must restart. So all right, here we are. So if you look up on the top right here, you have quite a few tabs. Now we have library, develop, map, book, slideshow, print, web. Now these are customizable, but the uh, only two main tabs we will be using are library and develop. All right, so uh, we want to import photos into our Lightroom catalog, our new Lightroom catalog. So we must be in the library tab. Make sure you're in the library tab on, on, and on the bottom left, you have an import button. All right, so you get this little dialog box here. All right, so I have quite a few uh, raw files here. So all you have to do is I want to import all these photos into our new catalog. So I will just drag these into this little box right here. All right, so after they are all here, make sure uh, the ones you want are ticked. Now the ones that are not ticked uh, won't be imported. So you can uh, further select uh, which photos you want to import. So when you're done, just hit import and the photos will be coming in, all right? So the photos are in here. So now we are in the library um, tab. All right, so what we can do here is we can review all our pictures. We can go through all our pictures. We have 18 pictures, just 18 pictures. So um, at this stage, usually uh, photo as a photographer, if you're using Lightroom, uh, you're most probably a photographer. So what you're going to do at this stage is basically called calling and that's um, throwing away the photos that you don't want and marking the photos that you want. So usually uh, in Lightroom, we're doing this by star ratings. So to set a star rating for a photo, basically just mouse over it and you'll see these five dots. You can set up to one to five stars. Just click on the dots to set the star rating or otherwise we can always use the keyboard shortcuts, just one, two, three, for five to alter the star rating on your keypad or your number pad, just one, two, three, four, five to set the star rating. All right, so usually um, just set a star for the ones you want to keep. For example, I want to keep this one. I'll keep this one, keep this one. I won't keep this one, so I won't set, uh, I won't set any stars for it. I'll leave it at zero stars. I'd keep this one and I don't want this one. And let's just take it by random. I want this, I want this, I want this. I don't want the rest, I just want these. All right, so now that I've called my photos, um, what I can do is I only want to view the photos that I want. So what we can do here is if you, if you hover your mouse over here, you can see filters off. Now let's set a filter, rated. So now only the photos with a star rating will show up in uh, this little uh, window here. So any photo that has no rating will not show up in this window. All right, so I can even set a more advanced settings. I can um, filter it based on a rating. For now, um, it's anything that's greater than or equal to one star will show up. So if I pick two stars, okay, I have uh, no photos that have two stars or higher. So let's go ahead and make this two stars. So let's make this two stars as well. All right, so if it's two stars and higher, it will only show the photos that have a two star rating or higher. So this is basically how it works. Just play around with the filters. You can set it up to five stars or higher. You can set it less than or equal to or make it just equal to. But basically, uh, once you're done picking your photos here, you want to go over to, do, to the develop panel. And this is where all the magic happens to your photos. All right, takes a while to load. All right, so now we are in the develop panel and as you can see, it's in this view here. All right, so if you press I on your keyboard, you can actually toggle um, the metadata that shows up in this corner here. So I like it to have uh, showing my shooting settings. So anyway, uh, you navigate your photos down here in this uh, little timeline kind of bar here. So you uh, pick the photo. Now we're going to uh, fine tune or edit our photo. So let's take, um, this photo for example. All right, so 
on the top right here, you have a histogram. So this histogram is uh, not just for preview purposes. You can actually manipulate the histogram by dragging on it. So if you drag in the midtones area, you can change the exposure. And if you uh, drag the blacks, you can change the blacks. You can crush the blacks just by pushing the blacks down. Uh, I was pushing the exposure there. So let's crush some blacks. And then you can also clip the whites. Now you can also manipulate the shadows, also the highlights. So it's completely um, modifiable. So if we go down, you have the crop tool. Basically, you can turn or crop your image using the crop tool. Again, control Z to uh, undo. So we also have spot removal. Now these, I won't go through these uh, in detail because um, uh, if you are a Photoshop user, basically, um, you'll be familiar with these tools. So basically, uh, red eye correction, graduate to filter, radio filter, and adjustment brush. Basically, adjustment brush is a brush with a set uh, parameter. So let's say I select a adjustment brush. So I have these parameters. I want to increase the exposure using the brush. I want to decrease the contrast. I want to add saturation. So wherever I paint over with the brush, these um, uh, uh, these uh, adjustments will be made on wherever I've brushed over. All right, so let's go back by pressing close. All right, so these sliders here, they are pretty much self-explanatory. You can change the color temperature in Lightroom. You can change the tint. You can change the exposure. If you're shooting in RAW, this is a very great tool. If you're underexposing or overexposing, you can change the contrast. And then you can change the, uh, this is basically the same as mani manipulating the histogram, except uh, you're doing it in the form of sliders. So down here, you can set the clarity. If you turn it all down, uh, it give you a nice dreamy feel. If you, if you crank it all the way up, it gives you a very harsh feel. And then you have vibrance to uh, change the uh, vibrance of the colors in your photo. And we have saturation. So down here, we have a very familiar uh, tone curve. So basically, you can just drag the tone curve to make adjustments to your photos. And then this. All right, this panel over here is a, uh, it's quite similar to Photoshop's um, selective color. So if you're a user of Photoshop, this would be uh, rather familiar to you. Basically, you are um, changing the hue, saturation, or luminance, HSL, of each uh, color range. For example, uh, I can just manipulate the saturation of only the reds. So I can, I'm only changing the reds, and then I'm only changing the blues here by changing this slider. So um, again, more tools for you to work with. And we have split toning. Now split toning is basically, you apply a color cast to either the shadows or the highlights separately. So for now, I'm uh, manipulating the color of the shadows. I can use the color picker to pick a color for uh, the shadow regions in the, um, photo it's a little bit like color grading if you're into videography so basically you change the color of the shadows and then you change the color of the highlights to uh, whatever that pleases your look so um, this is split toning down here we have a details panel basically it's where you apply sharpening so um, i haven't sharpened this image yet so i can crank up the sharpening to sharpen the image so i can also change the radius of sharpening now if your radius is too big you will get um, the little glowing edges effect. Detail, you can select how much detail you want to keep, how much detail you want to throw, and masking. So masking, if you hold down alternate uh, when you're dragging masking, you can see this little uh, outlines. So basically what masking does is it excludes the low contrast areas uh, for sharpening and it only sharpens the high contrast areas. So the white regions you see here are the regions that will be sharpened and the black regions are the regions that will not be sharpened. So masking only sharpens the high contrast regions. So it brings up less noise in the empty regions like over here. Of course, we also have noise reduction. All right, so noise reduction, noise reduction in Lightroom actually works very, very well. So you can tweak your noise reduction. You can uh, select how much detail you want to keep. You can select the contrast. And then you can also reduce color noise down here using this slider. Again, detail, smoothness. So we have lens corrections coming up. So um, you can enable profile correction. So if you're using a lens and uh, the lens is in the list of Lightroom profiles, then you can use a profile to correct the uh, vignetting, the aberration, and the distortion of the lens. So 
I can correct the distortion. Uh, this photo was shot with a 51.4 Canon, so I can correct the distortion just by um, using this slider here, and I can correct, make up for the vignetting caused by the lens as well. So down here we have effects. We have a post crop vignetting. Basically, you can uh, apply heavy vignetting to your photos. You can fine tune it. You can even do reverse inverse vignette, which gives you white edges, which is rather odd. But usually, uh, giving it a slight vignette gives it um, a more aesthetic feel. So you can also change the midpoint of the vignette. Now, if I exaggerate this a lot, so basically, if I pull down the midpoint, it will bring the vignette very close to the center, and if I reverse it, it will bring it very close to the edges. So I can also choose the roundness of the vignette. I want it. I can have it to be a square vignette, and I can have it to be a very, very circular vignette. Now, anything in the mid region is good. So I can also change the feather of the vignette, how soft I want the vignette to be. If I turn it all the way down, you can see this is the vignette with no feathering. So this highlights basically um, how much highlights you want to exclude from the vignette. So if you turn this up, the highlight regions will not be vignetted. So we can also add your own film grain. You can add grain. You can, add the si you can change the size of your grain, how fine you want the grain to be. You can also change the roughness of the grain as well. So the, these are all um, for uh, aesthetic purposes. You want to add grain to your black and white photos to give it a more black and whitish feel. Alright, so now we have camera calibration. So camera calibration is basically like picture profiles uh, on your camera. So they are, these are technically the picture profiles in Lightroom. So of course, they are, these are all the parameters that you can play with. So after that, uh, if you screw up anything, you can also reset the photo to bring it back to how it was. So we can go one by one. So let's say I apply a set of settings to this photo. For example, I want to increase the contrast a bit, increase the exposure a bit, uh, crush some shadows, uh, bring up the reds, um, and apply a heavy vignette. So I've got a few photos here and I want to ex apply the exact same um, settings to those photos as well. So um, it's rather time consuming to go one by one and perform these tasks on each photo one by one. So what I can do here is now I'm currently on the third photo here. So let's say I want to apply it to the first and second photos. So I will control click click on the first and second photos. Now you can see uh, the highlight on the third photo is uh, brighter compared to the first and second photos. That means this is the photo I'm on. So this is the photo I'm on. So this photo I'm on will be the master. So the settings that I applied to these photos will be applied to these two photos when I right click and then, uh, sorry, you don't right click, you click synchronize here, sync. Click synchronize and the exact same settings will be applied to these two candidate photos as well. So once you're done going through the photos and you've done fine tuning them, you've done um, applying your edits to them. So what you can do now to save these photos is, well, like I said, Lightroom is non-destructive editing. So your original source files will be uh, remaining as they are. So you will have to select which files you want to export. So right now I only have this uh, file highlighted here. So if I hit export, only this file will be exported. So let's say I want to export all the files. So I will select all these files here, make sure they're all highlighted, and I go to File, Export. So now, exporting to a specific folder, basically choose your directory, select folder. You can also have them uh, have Lightroom automatically put all your uh, pictures in a subfolder. You can rename your files upon export. You can limit your file size. You can uh, select your image format, your color space, the quality, and then you can limit the file size. Right now, I've uh, limited it to uh, 1.5K kilobytes. So that's 1.5 megabytes because I don't want 30 megabyte photos. And then you can uh, select your image scaling. You can sharpen upon output. And then you can leave out your metadata. And then you can also uh, overlay a watermark upon exporting once you've configured a watermark. All right, so once you're done, hit export. All right, so if there are conflicting files in that subfolder that you are exporting to, you can either overwrite that file, you can skip that file, assign a unique name for the new file. So I'll skip this file. Now on the top left, this is your progress bar. So now you can see it's exporting seven files. Uh, it's uh, rendering them one by one. So once they're done, the, uh, the bar will finish 
and then all your files will be saved into the folder that you have set just now. So this is basically the basic workflow of Lightroom. I hope my video uh, is enough to get you started on Adobe Lightroom. So if you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.